Hey everybody. Um, so over the last uh, few weeks or so um, during my um, end period at Sega, uh, I managed to get my hands on a lot of just stuff um, uh, either from friends or from um, work and things like that. I'm trying to sort of preserve um, as much Sega stuff, old stuff, especially rare stuff as much as I can. Uh, but um, it's, everything's not always just rare. Um, I, I, I am a big uh, sort of Sega console just fan in general, so I try to collect um, a lot of the stuff that I don't have. Um, my favorite console is still probably uh, the Sega Saturn. Uh, I know a lot of people have sort of warm feelings for the Dreamcast, and I love the Dreamcast. I think it's great, but um, I just, you know, the, Sa the Saturn came at a, at a sort of a time in my life where I was um, just really getting back into video games. I mean, I was always into video games, but it was, uh, you know, the rivalry between Sega and Sony with the PlayStation um, was really heating up. And me being a fighting game fan, um, I loved sort of the the battle between the two as far as what sort of exclusives and what sort of um, franchises they could get. And, um, you know, obviously the Saturn was sort of that 2D king with the um, the memory cart and it also had the Virtua Fire series which I am a huge fan uh, of. Uh, you guys can probably see back there a Virtua Fighter 2 arcade machine which I've had for quite a while. Um, I've also written uh, several Virtua Fighter strategy guides for um, Sega um, official guides back in the day. Um, so um, definitely a huge fan of that series. Um, so I think its existence on um, the Saturn uh, as well as the 2D fighting games and, and just that sort of classic period where Sega was bringing over all of their arcade hits to home <clears throat> was exciting. And so that's why that, I think that console has such a sort of a special place in my heart. And I think the fact that it was very difficult to program for in many ways because of the sort of the dual SH2 chips um, makes it uh, even more special because basically if you're developing for that, uh, you're definitely dedicated, right? If you're trying to push as much um, of the hardware as you can, it wasn't an easy task. Um, so, you know, in relation to the Saturn, I'm always trying to collect stuff, <clears throat> any missing games, um, any sort of missing hardware or peripherals and stuff. So I wanted to share with you a couple of things that I've gotten recently um, that I'm sort of really excited about. Some greater than others, but still uh, pretty cool. So <clears throat> first thing, as you guys might know, is the Netlink, right? Um, so I managed to find basically a Netlink still in box. It's pretty much mint condition. Um, and I have a couple of Netlinks sort of that are just outside of packaging that I've kept in general. But this is the first one that I found um, that was sort of complete in box. Um, I also have over there somewhere, there was a, there was a Netlink game pack that had virtual on and I think Sega Rally in it, which I found too, which had all the instructions and stuff in it too. So that's, that's awesome. But this is a great find just to draw. Obviously I'll never use it, but it's kind of a cool, uh, kind of pivotal time as far as, uh, taking consoles online. Right. So, <clears throat> um, let's see other peripherals. Um, you can't, you can't have a, a Saturn without the 3D control pad. It's crucial. Um, I probably have like 11 or 12 of these now, maybe like four or five there in the box. And then probably a couple of ones that are part of the Knights collection that I was originally came out in. So, um, you know, these, these are great controllers. Uh, they're still a little bit weird because the whole hockey puck design, but, um, uh, definitely being one of the early analog sticks was a, was a great peripheral and a great controller that I still use pretty consistently. Uh, along with the six button controller, um, which I got a ton of. I got a lot of six button controllers, the Japanese and the US versions, because you never know when you're going to need that. Um, uh, that's, sorry, that's in relation to the Genesis, not the Saturn. I did get some Saturn controllers as well, but I was just excited that I got a bunch of six button controllers for the Genesis, um, because uh, like I said, you can you can never have enough of those, right? Um, <clears throat> one of these would have had, I had out of the box, but <clears throat> first time I had it in the box, which is um, the mission stick, which, um, uh, you know, I didn't really use joysticks that much back in the day. <clears throat> Even for fighting games, I used the, the gamepad. Um, so uh, just joysticks wasn't something that I had generally bought for the Saturn um, or consoles in general, really. Um, 
I did buy one for the Super Nintendo when I was in my whole Street Fighter phase back then. But um, now that I have a couple of these, I can link them together. You can put um, the joystick on the other side as well. It becomes sort of a twin stick thing if you're going to play Virtual On. But I have... Um, I'll show you guys later, but I have the Virtual On stick as well from Japan, so I, I, I would rely on that versus this for Virtual On when I do play it. But it's cool to have something like this uh, still in the uh, the collection that's still in box. Um, it's weird because, you know, if you look at this, it's very strangely packaged because um, this whole side area is completely empty. Um, so it's kind of a weird uh, design and kind of a waste of packaging. So I don't know, whoever designed the packaging for this, um, was either just starting out or didn't have any good ideas about how to effectively package that. But, um, uh, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Let's see what else we got. Oh, Sega CD stuff. I'm jumping around here. I just grabbed an assortment of stuff. Um, Mass Rider, uh, Common Rider, um, which is um, sort of one of those, you know, it was the heyday of the video based game, right? And this is sort of one of them. There's a ton of those. When the, when the Sega CD came out, everyone was on that FMV bandwagon. So um, they loved uh, they, they loved that stuff. And they made like games uh, utilizing uh, full motion video constantly. Um, this is sort of one of them. I have to admit, I've only watched a little bit of Masked Rider, but it does have a loyal following. So um, it's a great addition to my Sega CD collection. <clears throat> Speaking of... Uh, FMV sort of movies and the true video sort of uh, production stuff. Prize Fighter, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it's a great idea to make a boxing game that isn't truly interactive, and you're basing it quite honestly on FMV. But again, you know, back in the in those days, welcome to the next level, right? It's it's true motion video, and um, we need to make a boxing game out of it. Um, this one has how many discs is this? Two discs. Oh, that's kind of uh, not that much actually for a full motion one, but um, definitely one of the more interesting. I actually have not played this game. I'm going to um, later on. I'll let you guys know how it is, but um, interesting to say the least. Um, wow, this one still has a price tag on it. Twenty dollars. I wonder where it was sold from. Uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Um, this is a game that I've wanted in my collection for a while. Uh, I think it's somewhat rare. Um, not hugely rare, but somewhat. Um, and I kind of stumbled upon it. Uh, wow, check out MA13. That was before the whole full ESRB thing, right? Back in the days. Um, so, um, again, uh, another another one that I've sort of been wanting to play. Sort of is that FMV thing as well, but it's um, animation, um, if you can kind of see animation there on the back um and uh ironically up for two players as well so <clears throat> definitely going to check that out with uh some buds try that out um one of my first games for the sega cd um which is still great because i love sherlock holmes and just the recent games for the current gen systems right was uh sherlock holmes consulting detective right um which uh, I played a lot when I first got my Sega CD. This one is actually still sealed in the box, which is pretty awesome. Um, I've played it to death, so I don't need to open it and play it anymore. I, I pretty much still remember a lot of stuff, but um, still a great game. Um, I love those mystery games, just things where you're helping to solve um, mysteries. And this is actually, oh, actually, you know what? This is volume two. Um, I did play this as well, but uh, um, I thought this was the original one, but this is volume two, so there you go. Um... This one was one of the earlier games, too. Um, I did not own this or play this. Uh, it is Cobra Command, um, which is sort of your um, kind of flying into the screen chopper game. And um, uh, this box is kind of beat up, but um, still glad to have it. Um, like I said, never never played it, so I'm looking forward to popping it in and, and seeing how it is. Um, can never beat, you know, action shooters. Uh, hopefully it captures a little bit of that afterburner vibe. I assume not moving as quickly, but still um, should be fun to play. And sort of the last thing today, I think I... Oh, no, I got two more things um, that are Sega-related, but not uh, CD or Saturn. This was just kind of cool, because I'm just amazed at the condition this in. So this is... Um, uh, freaking uh, Sega control pad for the Master System. And um, I have a few of these, but it's like still in the box, like brand, like practically mint condition. There's a couple of creases on this one, but the other one is mint condition. I'm like, holy cow. Um, what is this? Copyright? Uh, I can't remember what year. I wonder what year this particular release came out of it. Um, 
Oh, Sega Marriott when had a P.O. box. P.O. box. In, oh, when, south in, when they're south in San Francisco. But, uh, oh, strangely enough, the controller's made in Taiwan. Huh. But, um, yeah, class, uh, classic uh, Sega Master System. Um, you know, great find. Um, for those who are younger who don't know what the Master System is, yeah, it's look at the controller. Woo. Um, pretty simplistic these days, right? But if you compare it against the Nintendo Entertainment System, then it sort of makes sense because you got the, the two buttons in the... Uh, control pad. This control was actually pretty good. You could slide your fingers across it uh, quite easily um, versus the Nest, which had the, the plus, right, which um, get used to too. But I always I always thought this was a nice way uh, to uh, slide your fingers across smoothly and it worked for a lot of different games better, I think, than the traditional plus pad that we have. And... I already had, I already had, uh, oh, see, now I'm jumping to Dreamcast, so sorry, I'm jumping around. I was originally going to try to have this organized a little bit, but um, I'll have it organized later on uh, as we move forward, but um, there's just too much stuff to sort of share. This one I had before, but you guys should know this. This is the um, uh, sort of the Dreamcast uh, keyboard. Uh, it's not in the package. It's, it's weird. It's like in an OEM packaging for some reason. It might have been a... Um, replacement uh, you know sometimes customer support has these to send to people who have uh, defective units or something um, so that's probably why it's like in this OEM packaging and not an official one I have one in the regular um, Dreamcast packaging but um, uh, you know you can never have enough of these for typing of the dead and uh, anything else you want to use the t I guess the browser really not that many uses for it honestly uh, PSO <laughs> and <clears throat> One of the my great finds, which I actually didn't have as well, which is awesome, uh, which is the Green uh, Dreamcast broadband uh, adapter. Um, you know, this is pretty coveted by Dreamcast owners. Um, you know, it um, uh, we didn't make that many, or Sega didn't. I didn't make them. Sega didn't make that many or manufacture that many of these. Really, it came at the tail end, and this is in like pretty much mint condition. I mean, it's like flawless as far as um, what it looked like if you bought this in the store. So I'm really excited about this. I have no plans to use this quite honestly, but um, it's something that I really want to, I wanted to have for my collection because I didn't have one. So this is pretty cool. Uh, ooh, supports Quake 3 Arena and more. Uh, you know, pretty ahead of its time in some ways um, having this on a, on a system. So kudos to Sega uh, for that. Um, so. It's awesome. I'm so happy to have one of these. Um, so I think that is... It. Oh, my uh, my Sonic Boom Tracy Yardley sign is falling down. I need to frame that or something. Um, so that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed some of that stuff. Um, I'm going to try to have a little bit more organization as far as the things I show you guys uh, sort of moving forward. But that's at least still some of the recent stuff that's in one of my first boxes um, that I got excited about. Um, as I sort through stuff and kind of organize it, I'll have a better idea of all the things that I have. Um, but hope you enjoyed that and uh, stay tuned um, for next time and uh, we'll see what other surprises I have um, from the storage room. All right, take care. Bye.